Today on Fast TV, we're up in Aberdeen to meet the farmer who's saving 23% on his fuel bills with hydrogen vehicles. And we visit the SRUC Crapeston campus to learn about the practical agricultural courses available to students. Education is essential for the next generation of farmers, crofters and land managers. Scotland's Rural College, SRUC for short, provides a wide range of practical courses and training for students covering a multitude of disciplines within agriculture. Melanie Robson is a lecturer based at the SRUC Crabston campus near Aberdeen, where many of the more practical courses are offered. Uh, trying to get uh, agricultural uh, courses much more practical based. Um, we understand that out there in the real world lots of agricultural industries are needing them to be able to do more practical stuff rather than being classroom based so that they're more ready for, for employment. Uh, so we have now improved Talach facilities greatly we are in the process, well, we have actually built a new shed, um, purpose-built shed for the practical um, engineering side. So there'll be, hopefully we'll have um, tractor building like maintenance and going to carry out uh, welding facilities, that sort of thing, bricklaying, tiling. There's going to be chainsaw practicals so it's actually all there now for the for doing the we have the livestock side of it here which I'm predominantly more part of and we've got the livestock facility we've got the cattle court we've got sheep handling facilities and these are all going to be upgraded and improved and we've also got highlander breeding sheep and we've got some mules on the farm at the moment, but we're still in the process of uh, improving and um, we're all coming together to make the Tullach a much better uh, practical facility and hopefully the students give the students a greater experience. So our youngest ones, we've actually, our youngest ones are 16. So they apply for the NC, the National Certificate course in agriculture and they are 16 years old so they're quite young and some of them have had absolutely no experience whatsoever so we give them a gentle introduction and get them comfortable with us and hope that they can ask us any questions that they need to or if they're not sure of something we are there to advise and help. We've got the national certificate level which is generally about 16, 17 and you've got your HNC which is 17, 18 HND is 18, 19 and you've got degree level. It goes up to degree and honours degree. So you, you, go, you can go from the very beginning all the way through, which is a great, great thing. And they, come, they can come out at ev any level as well. So if you start at NC, you can finish at NC, but you've got options to opt out at any level and you come out with a qualification. So I, I get them out to uh, do grassland, identity, so they're able to go out and uh, identify grasses, uh, very important in grassland for livestock so that they're able to determine whether their swards are viable or not, so they get to look at weeds, species, grass ID, I get them to look at different combinable crops, so I will give them a range of combinable crops and they have to identify them all and know what their uses are for. Uh, I take them out on uh, livestock practicals, so sheep handling, they get to do dosing, injecting, body condition scoring, they talk about um, MOTs for tupping time, so what to look for in their, their tups, how to assess, how to feed them all year round, so they look at feeding, making sure they've got water, the cattle side of it, they take them in, they doze, they inject, they clip, they take their temperature. There's just so many things I do with the students. Equipment, 
uh, they learn the basics of tractor driving for a start, just to be able to switch it on, uh, get comfortable in it, uh, learn the basics of the tractor, and then they, they, they go up a grade. They learn to fence, they do electric fencing. There's lots of things that they get to do. Practical, hands-on activities provide many benefits for the students and prepare them for on-farm work when they graduate. Coming up here, they get to try a little bit of something, of everything, and um, if they like it, they will ask to do more of it. You know, it's, it's just give, give them the experience, get them comfortable, give them the confidence to say, I've tried it, I think I can do it, and when the farmer, the, if they apply for a job and the farmer says, well, I'll be needing you to do X, Y, Z, can you try any of these? And they'll go, yeah, well, I've done it in, in the college, so hopefully I'll be able to do it out in the real world. So that's, that's what I think it gives them. It gives them a huge, huge confidence boost to be able to go out and say, yeah, I've tried that and I think I'm capable of doing that and I can apply for that job because I kind of know what they're expecting of me. Joe Smethurst and Becky McGregor are two students currently studying an NC in agriculture at Crabston. I'm from Manchester in England, um, so I've, I've moved up here um, looking for sort of better opportunities, more opportunities, all, all sorts of bits like that. You know, don't, don't get an opportunity to do a lot of these things at, well, in Manchester. So I chose SIUC because um, you know, I do like Scotland, I really do. It's a much different atmosphere um, to Manchester. Um, and I've spoken to, well, I'd spoke to a few people who'd been here and said it was really, really good. And that inspired me. Hi, I'm Becky McGregor, I'm 18 years old and from Dundee and I'm studying NC Agriculture at Crabston. NC Agriculture is the first year just coming into the first year of studying your basics about livestock and the ground and what makes it better and what to do to make it better. Desk-based jobs are not for everyone and both Becky and Joe enjoy the practical opportunities that SRUC provides. The best part for me would be the practical as you get to work with sheep near enough every week um, or going about on the hill on the quads or stuff like that. You get the chance to roam free, I guess. So you're always out, you're always away doing something. There's never a chance where you're sitting back wondering what am I going to do. You're always away doing something, whether it's sheep, cattle, dogs. There's always something to do on a farm. There's never no jobs. You know, college isn't for everyone. I, you know, when I was still at school, I always thought, nah, I sat college off. But now I've, now I've been and I've, I've had this opportunity which obviously I'm very fortunate for. Um, I'm definitely glad I came because I've met a lot of really, really decent people um, and f few friends for life, really. Provides a lot of opportunities, really, um, in the sense that, you know, people know people, as in, I could go to a lecturer and say, do you know someone who potentially would have a job um, vacancy? And they could give me uh, people, you know, people's names, addresses, phone numbers, anyone who I could ring and, and say, you know, would have been able to apply for such a job. Um, part time, full time. And on top of that, they do supply, obviously, um, education, practical side, personally my favourite. Um, and it is, it does give you that bit of experience. Um, moving moving forward so um, with me having a job that well this obviously helped me um, sort of get ready to move on for bigger things. If you'd like to find out more about courses at SRUC visit www.sruc.ac.uk
During a time of rising input costs and pressure to reduce carbon emissions, David Barron from Nether Adden Farm in Aberdeenshire is reducing his diesel costs by around 23%. By fitting hydrogen electrolyzers to his farm machinery and pickup truck, David is improving fuel efficiency and this year aims to complete a carbon neutral harvest. Hello, my name's David Barron. I farm at Netheradden Mintlaw in Aberdeenshire. It is a mixed farm, half in grass, half in cereals. The cereal side is predominantly spring barley grown for the malting industry, so whisky making and the cattle side is of 150, 160 Aberdeen Angus cows that we try and finish to the local butchers. The electrolyzers, the technology works. There is a water reservoir there that distilled water is put into. There's an electrolyzer that splits the atom of water and makes oxyhydrogen gas, which is pumped into the air intake of the engine which in turn cleans up the engine, makes it more efficient. I was asked to be the climate change monitor farm for the northeast of Scotland about eight or nine years ago, which was a project to try and make your farm more efficient, in turn make it more environmentally friendly. The guy who sold me said you'd save 20 to 25% in diesel, and I've kept rigorous fuel records, which the guys at SAC have checked and verified and confirmed that's true. With current fuel costs sky high, David is feeling the benefit of his hydrogen conversion at the pump. Fuel has gone from 30 pence a litre for red diesel to well over a pound. So this hydrogen monetary is, is working better and better, even though it's doing the same thing. It's putting thousands of pounds, not back in your pocket, but you're not having to spend it. The success of the programme means David now has a fleet of hydrogen vehicles on farm, with a recent upgrade bringing the total up to five. The first machine was the JCB Lodol, because it was going all day, every day. Then I fitted it to the T6180. Then I fitted it to my farm truck, because it's doing quite a lot of running about and then it was fitted to this T7210 and the last vehicle which was done last week was my New Holland Combine. The 2022 harvest is nearly upon us. We will be starting to roll in August and I think I'm not lying by saying we will nearly have a carbon neutral harvest because the combine we'll be driving is a hydrogen hybrid. Both tractors that are carting the grain in will be carbon hybrid. And my grain facility, which I've had for eight years, is biomass that creates the hot air. And I've got solar panels on the roof that will drive the fan and the stirrers, grain stirrers. So the harvest, in theory, should be done. All the power will be nearly carbon neutral. Um, this is the hydrogen box. Um, it's very unobtrusive. It's basically a, resi a water reservoir which is in distilled water. You keep it between the maximum and the minimum. There's an electrolyzer behind it that makes oxyhydrogen gas, which in turn is pumped into the air intake of the engine and keeps the engine decarbonised and makes it 23% more efficient. Some farmers may be sceptical about this technology, but David firmly believes that hydrogen can provide significant solutions in helping reduce vehicle emissions and input costs. Hydrogen is the way ahead. JCB have developed a, a hydrogen engine. This is just a halfway house that is invoking uh, diesel engines. I can see in my son Jamie and Tom and Jack's generation that they will be making their own fuel and fertilizer from hydrogen. My advice is that if your fuel bills are too big, consider this because um, if it didn't work, I would say what a load of rubbish, but we've trialed it and it does. That's why I've invested more and more into it. I like buying less diesel. I like um, putting on less fertilizer. That's what kills farming, is too much inputs, or too high inputs. I didn't really think 
climate change 10 years was a problem. I watched the news, um, I was very interested in the COP26, I was a fact-finding farm, so I had some politicians here, uh, and um, I think it is a problem with rising temperatures, and I want my, whoever farms after me, because I'm just looking after the farm, I want them to have as, as good a farming career as I've had. It's early July and we're past the longest day. We're officially at the start of summer. And I'm sure many of you were pleased to be back at the Highland Show in person this year. I certainly was. We've been having calls from vets in practice describing skin lesions in cattle across the country. And in the winter time, often skin conditions are due to ectoparasites, so parasites that live in the skin, such as lice or mites, or perhaps in house cattle, ringworm, which is a fungal infection, can cause skin lesions in cattle. But these are much less common when cattle are outside. And recently, we've been diagnosing cases of photosensitization, so that's sunburn in cattle. This can be caused by eating certain plants, such as St John's wort, that have got photodynamic agents that result in this hypersensitivity to the sun. Another cause of photosensitization can be if there's liver damage, then you can get secondary photosensitization due to that. Typically with photosensitization, lesions are seen on the paler, unpigmented areas of skin, and these areas will become reddened. The skin might even ooze, and over time it will become dry and could slough off. So it's a really painful condition, and it's important, particularly if you've identified toxic plants, to remove them off that pasture. Ideally, affected cattle should be housed so that they're protected from the UV light. And remember that flies could irritate and make these lesions even worse. So good fly control is an important part of, of treatment. We have, however, made more diagnosis of more unusual conditions, skin conditions in cattle in recent weeks. So we've had one case of cutaneous lymphoma. So this is a, a skin tumour that can affect cattle. It usually just happens as a, as a one-off in a herd and it usually just affects young cattle. So cattle typically less than two years of age. Another cause of skin lesions that's slightly more unusual is malignant cataro fever. So we've spoken about this before. This is the condition in cattle that's caused by a virus, ovine herpes virus in sheep. You don't get any signs in the sheep at all, but it can cause disease in cattle. And so the first sign sometimes of MCF in cattle can be skin lesions, but often there will be a really high temperature associated with that as well. So if you are seeing unusual skin conditions in your cattle, do speak to your vet so that we can ensure we get the right diagnosis and treatment if possible. At this time of year, we also see cases of neurological disease in lambs, and one of the most common reasons for that is cerebrocortical necrosis, or CCN. So this is caused when there is a diet change this means that the rumen bacteria, the, the microbes in the rumen, change. And this induces a deficiency in vitamin B1, which is also known as thiamine. So this happens when there's a diet change. So perhaps moving to a different pasture, introducing creep feed, or perhaps weaning could all be triggers for, for CCN to happen. Affected lambs might initially present as being blind, so they might start bumping into things. This might progress to recumbency and stargazing, so lying with their necks stretched out and, and looking up to the sky. If these cases can be diagnosed promptly, so if you get your vet out quickly, then we've got a much better response to treatment and IV thiamine can, can really give successful results. Another really common disease that can cause brain lesions in lambs again it can happen at this time of year, is pulpy kidney due to Clostridium perfringens. So all sheep are susceptible to Clostridium perfringens and most breeding flocks will be vaccinated against it. And the vaccination of the dams gives protection to very young lambs through their colostrum. The issue is by this age, the maternally derived antibodies will have waned. Therefore, lambs are very susceptible to this condition. So pulpy kidney can present as recumbent lambs or perhaps blind lambs, but more typically, it will present a sudden death. So do speak to your vet to check that your lambs are fully vaccinated against clostridial disease. Well, I hope the sun continues to shine and we get enough rain to keep the grass growing and we'll see you next time. <laughs>